Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to take a brief look at Ronald Koeman's tactics during his time as Holland manager. When we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Holland in a 4-2-3-1, and they often did shift in between a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-3-3. What we end up seeing from Holland when they look to push forward is that their attacking base shape requires them to push forward and attack with six players and defend with four. So with that being said, you have the center forward up front that was often Memphis Depay or Luke de Jong looking to shift laterally across that back four and dropping off deeper away from the center backs to maintain a position between the lines. When you look out to the wider areas, what you end up seeing is that those players on the left and the right look to tuck in and they often do adopt space ahead of the fullbacks and the gap between the fullbacks and the center backs and that allows the fullbacks to push forward and provide width. There were times where you did have Quincy Promise in particular adopting a wide left or right position on the touchline, and that's when you would see the fullback stay narrow, but for the most part, what you ended up seeing was that the wider players in Babel or Bergwijn looking to adopt narrow positions, and that allowed the fullbacks in Daily Blind or Veltman to push forward. When you look to the number 10 role, you had Van der Beek and Wijnaldum looking to break forward to offer another attacking outlet in the box to get onto crosses. Wijnaldum could drop off deeper and play safe passes, but he was a goal threat for Ronald Koeman. And Van der Beek could receive the ball between the lines, but for the most part, you would see him looking to adopt attacking positions off the striker or into pockets of space around the box. So as you can see, those are the six attacking players, but that does leave a lot of space for the opposition to exploit. What you end up seeing from the double pivot is that they look to drop off into the half spaces to ensure that they cover areas out in those wider areas if teams look to break in transition. And then you have the center backs in Delit and Van Dyke who are capable of also shifting across, and they're very good in 1v1 situations. If Holland were playing in a 4-3-3, they would have De Jong as their sole pivot dropping off deeper ahead of the center backs to get on the ball, and that does encourage the full backs to push forward, and that would often see the two midfield shuttlers looking to adopt those half spaces to get into possession. Wijnaldum, like I said, would drop off deeper and look to push forward, and you would see more of Darun and Daly proper looking to drop off into those zones to get on the ball in the half spaces, whereas you had Wijnaldum and Van Vanderbeek looking to push forward to get into those attacking zones. But when we focus on that midfield, there's a lot of rotation as well. There are times where you have De Jong pushing forward, for instance, and Wijnaldum dropping off deeper to pick up the ball in the half spaces. The same can be said for Memphis Depay. If he was playing on the left-hand side, he would drop off deeper, and he has the ability to evade challenges. So he would pick up the ball in those deeper positions, beat his marker, and then look to push forward, whereas, let's say, Wijnaldum or De Jong would adopt that narrow left-sided position. So there was lots of flexibility lots of rotation in their overall attacking shape and now we'll look at different examples to see how Ronald Koeman's tactics were executed on the pitch. If we look to their overall attacking base shape here we could see Stengs and Memphis narrow. You have Wijnaldum higher up the pitch. De Jong and Proper are marked out by Sorga and Vasiliev and then you have the fullbacks wide and high. If we look to an example as to how Holland's base attacking shape gets them into good positions, you have Proper in an inside right position ahead of Oyama, and he slides the ball across him into the path of Promes pushing forward from that right back position. If we assess the positioning of Promes' teammates across the pitch, you have Stengs to the right of Einsalu and ahead of Kalaste, and you have Memphis between the lines and Van Anholt pushing high from a left back position. And we could look to an example where you have Promes swarmed by Kalaste and he drops the ball off to Proper who splits Kalaste Laste and Oyama for Stengs. So first we'll start with the midfield zone and what we end up seeing is that De Jong and Darun often drop off into the half spaces to provide cover for the fullbacks pushing forward to ensure that Holland aren't breached in transition. But they also look to drop off into that zone to evade pressure from the opposing side's midfield and to get on the ball and they often drop off to the right of De Litt to pick up the ball in those spaces. There is one example in particular where you end up seeing Darun dropping off into that space because 
because you have De Jong pressed out of the game by McNair. So what you end up seeing is that either both of them drop off into those spaces or you have one protecting the center of the pitch and the other looking to get on the ball in the half space. If we look to some examples, what you end up seeing from De Jong and Darun is that they're able to get their fullbacks into attacking positions when they drop off into that zone. First, we end up seeing Darun dropping off into the half space pressed by Davis and he clips a diagonal ball for Blind running off white into the opposing side's final third. Then we can look to Darun poking the ball to Berghaus dropping off into the midfield zone and he ends up clipping a diagonal ball for Blind again running off white into left half space and his pullback for Babel creates a chance that should have been finished. And then we can look to Proper who does offer a bit more penetration when he drops off into those positions. You have Proper in right half space splitting Oyama and Einsalu for Stangs ahead of Metz and Kalast and what he ends up doing is that he runs at Kalast and slides the ball wide to Promise pushing forward and that leads to an opportunity created for Luke de Jong and then we see proper receiving the ball from de Litt, and he ends up wrapping it around Einsalu for Stangs ahead of Vasiliev and Antonov and that creates a chance for Wijnaldum breaking towards the edge of the box but he also wastes that opportunity that being said an issue that Holland can encounter is if their double pivot or their deeper midfielder in de Jong is marked out of the game by the opposing sides midfield however Holland are able to to overcome that because DeLitt and Van Dyke are capable of pushing forward and clipping diagonal balls out to the advanced fullbacks. We see it on several occasions where if Van Dyke specifically is marked out of the game, DeLitt is often the free man and he's able to step forward and play positive passes out to the fullbacks. You could see DeLitt stepping forward and playing a diagonal ball to Memphis shifting into the left channel ahead of Dallas with a blend overlapping. If if we look to a time where De Jong and Darun are pressed out of the game, you have De Litt playing a diagonal ball out to Babel, peeling towards Dallas in that left channel, and you have Promise Central. And you can look to another example where you have all of Holland's midfielders marked out of the game, and it's De Litt pushing forward to play a diagonal ball into the path of Blind running off white. And ultimately, the same thing applies to Van Dyke. You can look to this long diagonal ball over the press for Promise ahead of Veratilo. There's a time where you have a Van Dyke diagonal for Veltman pushing forward and that's where you end up seeing Bergwijn narrow and Van Der Beek higher up the pitch but marked out and in that same game when you end up seeing Van Dijk slide a ball out to Veltman pushing forward that's where you witness Holland's shape once again you have Bergwijn narrow and you have Van Der Beek higher up the pitch looking to get into attacking zones and if we look to one more Van Dijk example you see him unmarked in his own half clipping a diagonal ball out to Veltman running off Bakar as the midfield is marked out of the game once again and that highlights Holland's ability to bypass the opposing side pressing out their midfield. And even if DeLitt and Van Dyke are marked out of the game from deeper positions, Holland could turn to Daly Blind, who is a reliable passer, and he often plays cross field switches out to the right back, who's able to push forward and get into good attacking positions. If teams look to press higher to ensure that DeLitt and Van Dyke can't get on the ball in those deeper positions, De Jong plays a key role to ensure that they do evade pressure and build out of the back by bypassing that press. If we look to an example, what you end up seeing is that Saville is stepping to DeLitt and he is looking to block off the passing lane into Veltman. But what we end up seeing is that De Jong simply drops off deeper to drag out McNair. And because Saville does overcommit towards DeLitt, De Jong is able to play a first time ball into the path of Veltman creating that 3v2 and that's how they're able to build out of that pressing scheme and we witnessed something similar against Portugal where you have Guedes blocking off the passing lane into Dumfries but looking to step into the path of De Litt. De Jong ends up dropping deeper to pull out Bruno Fernandes and what you end up seeing there is that De Litt plays the ball into De Jong who slides the ball out to Dumfries because Guedes does overcommit, and he's able to poke the ball into Bergwijn who drops it back off to De Jong. Another interesting concept to Ronald Koeman's tactics is if he has the narrow wider players shifting to one side of the pitch to create overloads. When you look to Holland, it was something that was witnessed between Stengs and Memphis. We could look to one example where you have Proper sliding the ball out to Promise pushing forward and he squares the ball across the edge of the box for Stengs who then attempts to play a ball across Mets for Memphis. Now let's shift to Holland's pressing. They do a very good job of pressing from the front and forcing 
the opposition into mistakes. And when we look to a few examples, we're able to see how they go about their business. There's one example where you have De Jong ahead of Letmetz. You have Memphis blocking off the passing lane into Teniste, and you have Wijnaldum ahead of Antonov. And when the ball is played into the path of Tam, Memphis squeezes on him and he blocks his clearance. If we look to another example, we end up seeing Holland's entire left side shifting over with De Jong moving towards Vasiliev. You have Van Anholt and Memphis stepping into the path of Teniste and Zenyov. And that's when you see Van Anholt step forward to dispossess Zenyov. And that leads to a chance for Holland. There was a time where you had De Jong stepping forward to Tam, but blocking off the passing lane into Antonov, and Memphis sticking tight on tennis day. Although Tam does bypass De Jong and gets the ball into the path of Antonov, you have Memphis quickly shifting over to apply pressure, and he blocks off the passing lane into tennis day, and that forces a loose pass. We could shift to another game where you have Berghaus looking to block off the passing lane into Lewis, but stepping into the path of Evans, Vanderbeek on Davis, and Babel just ahead of Cathcart, and we end up seeing Holland forcing Evans to clear the ball because of their pressure. While we also witness great examples of their counter press, you have Stengs misplacing a pass and you have Promise and Luke de Jong looking to quickly swarm Ainsalu and it forces a loose pass to Kalast. And then you have Stengs playing a poor back heel ahead of Kalast into the tracking Oyama rather than Memphis. And what you end up seeing is when Ainsalu does receive the ball from Kalast, he's swarmed by Stangs and loses the ball to Promes. And if we look to one final example, once again, it's Stangs having the ball poked away by Kalast into the path of Ainsalu, but he's instantly swarmed by Wijnaldum and Stangs, and Ainsalu pokes a loose ball across Vasiliev into De Jong, who comes across to recover possession. Lastly, if there was one weakness that we can identify in Ronald Koeman's tactical setup, it is the fact that when they do push the fullbacks higher up the pitch, if you have one of De Jong, Proper, or Darun losing possession in the half spaces, then that does present the opposition with the chance to attack Van Dijk and De Litt in space. If we look to a few examples, first we end up seeing Proper receiving a pass from Memphis and he's instantly swarmed by Vasiliev and Proper fails to poke the ball through his legs. And then we see more Vasiliev pressure that ends up leading to Proper giving the ball away to Sorga and it leads to a 2v2 situation. And there was one example in particular that highlights what Ronald Koeman does expect from his midfielders playing in the double pitch. Pivot. There was a time where Babel did lose the ball to Davis at half and Blind was caught higher up the pitch and Davis slid the ball to McGinnis ahead of Van Dyke and McGinnis instantly slid the ball out to White ahead of Blind but what you end up seeing here is Darun does shift across to provide cover and he forces White to overhit his cross. However, if that doesn't happen, we see examples like this. You have Blind stepping towards Stasevich to close him down, but Stasevic drops the ball off and it ends up getting slid out to Cavaliao, who breaks free down that right channel, but Van Dyke does come across to force him to play a loose square pass into Veltman. And if we look to one final example, it's Bergwijn losing the ball in the midfield zone and it's slid into the right channel for Cavaliao, and once again, it forces Van Dyke to come across, but Van Dyke does well to hold up the play and force Cavalier out to play the ball backwards. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.